So uh, let me actually uh, do the LR circuit three times. Um, so I'll do it first the hard way. And the reason really your textbook doesn't cover it. So uh, let me call this LR circuit analysis try one. And this is probably how we should have started the last time, but um, but I'll, I'll do this anyways now so that um, at least I can say you have seen it. So the way of handling it this time, it'll be my input voltage. I'm going to keep to real functions. So my input voltage is V0 cosine of omega t. That's something you can easily visualize. And that's hooked up to a register and an inductor. All right, and the, I think this is what we did the last time, and um, I will do this this time also. Um, the question uh, that we want to answer isn't the voltage across, it. well, actually, let's do it both ways. So we'll um, answer um, two different questions. The final question that, um, that we'll answer that can actually relate to the circuit demo that you have up here is what is the voltage across the inductor? That's a question you can ask and get an answer to. But an intermediate question that we should answer to get to that is what is the current flowing through the circuit? So this is where we do have to use Kirchhoff's rules. So let me just set it up. And I mean, you've seen this multiple times. But let me just set it up so that I'm not leaving anyone completely behind. Um, so Kirchhoff's loop rule says that when you go around in a loop, collecting all the changes of voltage, then the voltage change should add up to 0. So go around the loop, collecting all the voltage change. As I go across the power supply, I'm going to collect this voltage rise. V naught cosine of omega t. As I go across the register, I'm going to get voltage drop of minus i r. I'm writing this in to remind me that current is a function of time. And as I go across the inductor, I'm going to get voltage drop according to the uh, expression that we discussed, minus l ti dt. So all of this should add up to 0. That's what the loop rule says. So, so I'm using LR circuit because it is actually mathematically simpler. Once you write down the loop rule, then you realize, oh, that's all I need. I have one unknown current. And um, I have some differential expressions indicating this is a differential equation. So let me write. Uh, sim let me put this into the form I have been putting all my differential equations into. I'm going to solve this for the highest order um, differential. So di dt is equal to. So move this over. Divide up by l. So it'll be v naught over l cosine omega t minus r over l. I as a function of time, uh, but I'll, I'll, I won't write t here. I want to um, draw a distinction between things that are explicitly function of time and things that are not explicitly function of time. So when you look at this, and actually um, this is the one that's similar to your quiz, uh, before you use the separation of variables, right? Yes? So before you could do that, because when before, when you looked at expression here, nothing depended explicitly as a function of time. So you could essentially move the whole thing over to the other side, move t over, and do that. Now you cannot, because this is now an explicit function of time. So when you move the whole thing over, you have, you have not separated the variables. So, um, so this is really gets in the way. I, one, I don't know if I remember the right terms. Inhomogeneous uh, 
I think it's just a linear differential equation. Mathemat mathematicians probably have some term for it. <laughs> but what it comes down to is that for us, um, uh, separation of variables, which is the only direct way of, that we know of solving differential equations, doesn't work here. So what uh, approach does it leave us to try to solve this differential equation? Crystal, what approach remains for us to try to solve this differential equation? Yeah, we just simply have to guess and check. So let me... Um, quickly go through some of the more naive guesses that won't really get us to the answer. So here's one naive guess. You might guess that my current as a function of time is something sinusoidal, right? Because you intuit enough that if my voltage is oscillating, this is going to oscillate. So you might say it's some amplitude times cosine of omega t. And as you try to plug this in, you will see that um, there's no way this can work. Let me just uh, uh, write it out so that you can see that it doesn't work. Um, so let me plug it in. Left-hand side becomes derivative of this. So it's uh, minus omega i naught sine of omega t. That's the left-hand side. First time derivative. I'm trying to say that's equal to the right-hand side v naught over l cosine of omega t minus r over l i or i naught cosine of omega t. Uh, that doesn't work. Because when I simplify the right hand side, it becomes this. V naught over l minus r i naught over l times cosine of omega t. I have sine on the left-hand side, cosine on the right-hand side. Sine and cosine don't cancel. They are not the same function. So all right, so that won't work. What else would work if it, uh, sine and cosine don't work? I mean, so if a cosine wouldn't work, um, <laughs> Uh, so here's really the difficulty. Before, uh, when you are trying to get a solution to a similar differential equation, the only thing we are dealing with was the second order derivative. When you take two derivatives, cosine become, goes back to cosine. But here, now we are having to deal with the first order derivative, which creates a lot of problems with the trigonometric function. Let me try to uh, give you some um, intuitive motivation with this uh, circuit, which illustrates this uh, exact setup. Part of intuition is uh, simply knowing the answer. It doesn't matter how you know it. What's important is that you know what the correct answer is. I mean, if you had to give a definition of physical intuition, it, it's really nothing more than that. It's uh, knowing the answer without having to calculate it. If you had to calculate it to get the correct answer, then you don't have an intuition. That actually describes a lot of mathematicians and some theoretical physicists. Um, and sometimes that approach works, but I'll tell you that uh, some of the best engineers and best uh, physicists have plenty of physical intuition, meaning they didn't have to go through a lot of complex mathematical expressions to know the answer they could simply guess the correct answer. So you know, for most of us here, you don't have that intuition yet. That's why you are still in school and not in you know, government research. Um, so let me show you the answer. Uh, try to build our intuition from that. So what I am going to do is, um, so I have this circuit set up here. Um, so what I am going to do is, I want to have an answer for current. So what I'll do is I'll measure voltage across the register. That'll give me something that I can relate to as a current. So let me apply the voltage across the, so this is inductor and resistor in series, in case you haven't realized it. Um, so, so I'm applying a voltage now, and I will measure the output voltage across the register, which will be something proportional to the current. Um, oops. 
And what I want you to see right now is the um, oscilloscope picture. Let's see. Oops, that's upside down. All right, so uh, let me set up the, uh, highlight some of the features so that you can distinguish. Uh, right now it's uh, uh, showing both outputs. So uh, as usual, my input voltage is going to channel A. So let me just turn off and, well, actually let me turn off channel B. So, so um, this thing that you see me turn off and on, that's my output voltage across the register. Um, so I'm applying the, applying the uh, input voltage, sino, something sinusoidal. I guess I can change it so that it looks like a cosine of, um, let's see, it looks more like cosine. Mm. I guess it's not recommended, but I can do it. So, okay, so it looks more like cosine of omega t. Sorry, let me, uh, yeah, yeah. So it looks uh, kind of like cosine of omega t, right? So let's look at what the current looks like. The current, which is represented by this input voltage, does it look something like a cosine, as it's something oscillating? It is an oscillatory current, right? In what way is it different from the applied voltage? Hmm? Lower. It's lower, so it might have different amplitude. I've accounted for that before. So in what some other way is it different from the applied input voltage? It has shifted. So the input voltage maximum happens here but the, um, up the current maximum happens here. By the way, I think this is out of focus. So let me <laughs> get it to focus. Uh, so that is the biggest difference, that, um, that this current, it is still something oscillating, so it should be, it should be possible to describe it cosine and sines. So what I'm hoping that this is making you realize is that our guessed solution was missing one term. So it's not I not cosine of omega t, but I have to include a phase factor to account for the possibility that the current that we get will not have the same phase as the applied voltage. Good. This word phase is really where this phasor diagram gets its name from, but I don't know. I never liked phasor that. So anyways, let me use this new guess. So our new guess now is still cosine, but it has this phase factor. And that's going to give us some possibility to see if this can be correct answer to this. So let me write it out. But even with this correct guess, it's still going to take a lot of math. Um, that's once again why. The only reason I'm doing this is to show you that learning all this new mathematical tool is worth it, especially if you're dealing with the circuits. So is plug it in, take the derivative. So I get, um, well, same derivative as last time. So it's minus omega i naught sine of, um, well, inside it doesn't change. So it's omega t plus v. I already took out a factor of omega from the chain rule. This is the left-hand side. And the right hand side is this. So V naught over L cosine of omega t. This is applied voltage, so just cosine of omega t minus R over L. Um, so I, so cosine of omega t plus phi. All right, staring at this expression. Can you easily see that this left-hand side expression is equal to this right-hand side expression? I can't. <laughs> so this is where you need to do additional mathematics. Um, so what I would do is you have to use a sine, cosine, angle addition formula 
to take this expression and re-express it as a sum of sine and cosine. Take this expression, re-express it as a sum of sine and cosine. And then, um, then you collect like terms, collect terms with the cosine, collect terms with the sine omega t, and you can say term by term those coefficients have to agree. So that's the mathematical step you have to go through. It's not, I mean, it's tedious, but it's, once you realize what you have to do, it's not that hard. Um, everyone here remembers the sine and, sine and cosine angle addition formula? Um, if you have not yet have it memorized, I really recommend that you have it memorized, commit it to memory. This is the single most important trigonometric identity. So does, uh, yeah, this is the single most important trigonometric identity, which says, Cosine of alpha plus minus beta is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. Sine of alpha plus minus beta is equal to sine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus minus sine of beta, cosine of alpha. Um, for those of you who cannot commit this simple expression to memory, uh, let me tell you one way where you can avoid um, having to memorize this. One way you can avoid having to memorize this is to build a familiarity with a complex exponential. Because this is really why people introduce complex exponential. It simplifies all your math once you know how to deal, learn how to deal with a complex number. Uh, with this formula in tow, what you do is you would express cosine of theta uh, in terms of complex exponential. e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. And everything that's expressed in the trig identity, it comes down, you can work it out using um, exponential algebra really easily. But uh, anyways, that's a probably more of an upper division material. People really should have this memorized. Uh, it, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is not the first time in the last year that I mentioned this. Anyway, so let me use this formula to simplify this and see what I get and see if I can uh, get a result that's more reasonable. So I have to rewrite this. So this uh, uh, left-hand side will be minus omega i naught times uh, uh, I guess I have to go through step by step. So sine of, uh, I'm using this trig identity here. So it'll be sine of omega t cosine of phi uh, plus cosine of phi, no, sorry, sine of phi, sine phi times cosine of omega t. All right. Uh, I guess I better simplify because um, my expressions are going to get super long and complicated. Um, so let me uh, collect them in uh, with their respective like terms. I'll write down the cosine omega t term first, and then the sine omega t term. So this is equal to um, cosine of omega t times uh, this times the sine of phi minus omega i naught times sine of phi and plus the sine of omega t term, sine of omega t times uh, this times cosine phi. So minus omega i naught cosine of phi. All right, so this is my left-hand side. I have to work out my right-hand side, so let me write this out first. And then uh, we'll try to identify some coefficients together. So right hand side is, um, well, I guess, oh, I can just write this down. I don't have to do any work there. Uh, v naught over L cosine of omega t. And then this, I have to expand out the same way I did before, this time using the cosine angle addition formula. So minus r over l times, all right, looking at that, it's uh, uh, cosine of omega t times cosine of phi 
minus sine of omega t times sine of phi. So, all right, I have to collect like terms uh, like we did before. So let me do it uh, for the cosine omega t term first. I'll combine the like terms as I'm doing that. So cosine of omega t is equal to phi naught over L uh, minus, I feel like I missed something. Aha, uh -huh. um, there's this term i not here that I forgot. So there should be i not here <laughs> that I forgot. <laughs> it's complicated algebra. <laughs> um, all right, so cosine of omega t times all the like terms together. So v naught over L minus R i naught over L. By the way, this is something you should get into habit of doing. Uh, the reason I could see something was wrong here is the unit of R over L doesn't match the unit of v naught over L. You need to be constantly checking your expressions for units. That's how you know when you made an algebra mistake, uh, like I just did. Um, OK, so that's the cosine of omega t term. I need to write down the sine of omega t term. So uh, minus and minus, so it'll be plus sine of omega t uh, times, well, I guess the only thing, uh, r i naught over r i naught over l times sine of phi. All right. Mm, let's see. Um, it's tedious, but it's mathematically doable. So left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. And for that to be true, uh, left-hand side depends on as a function of cosine of omega t and sine of omega t. Actually, let me do it in different colors so that I can separate it in a way that I be meaning to. Cosine of omega t and sine of omega t. And the argument that you would make here is that the only way this equality can hold for all values of time t is to say the coefficient for cosine of omega t term must be exactly equal. And coefficient for sine of omega t term must be exactly equal. So what you would be able to say is uh, you can set up this uh, um, system of algebraic equations. You can say, uh, you can say this term here is equal to this box term here, and which would give you this expression here. Minus omega i naught sine phi is equal to v naught over L minus r i naught over L. Oh, wait. Uh, I. Uh, there's a cosine, yeah, that's what you're talking about, right? Cosine phi, um, this cosine phi that I forgot to write, write that. Once again, there's a reason I don't like to do this. <laughs> it, it's complicated, and complicated means a lot of chances to make mistakes. Um, so, good. <laughs> All right. Um, and the, um, the sec this is the first equation. And the second equation comes from saying that this coefficient must be equal to this coefficient here. So you say, all right, minus omega i naught cosine phi is equal to this. R i naught over L sine phi. This is a system of two equations involving two unknowns. It's, once again, tedious but doable. The two unknowns are your i naught and phi. So you can, um, so you can solve for i naught eliminating phi or vice versa. Uh, so let's see, do I want to go through this? I, I should. Um, we'll go through it and then take a break after. Um, well, let me put it this way. Um, I mean, you, you have a system of equation, and the rest is simply going through the math. So let's take our eight-minute break now, 
And during the break, I will simply write down the result here. You don't really need to see me go through the math. Um, I, I only need the result to, to quote. So, um, so you know, if you want to take the break now, please do. Uh, come back by 2.10. I will have the uh, answer to what I not and phi is written down here with all the steps in between. So I'll just work it out quietly. All right, right on time. Um, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> so this is the result. I had to um, do over the algebra twice. Well, once. Um, so the algebra is, you know, it's not easy algebra. It's tedious. You have to know the exactly right thing to do. And in case you want to work through it on your own, let me tell you the exact right thing to do. The exact right thing to do is to realize that in the second expression, I not actually cancels out. So the second equation actually gives you an expression for phi right away. And this is something you should use to simplify the first expression and eventually solve for i naught cosine of phi, draw the triangle to express it algebraically in terms of r and omega l. So once you do that, plug it in, then this is the simplified current expression. Um, so i naught is equal to v naught over this. So coming back to this um, answer here, what we would say is that for this guess to be correct, we have to say this i naught is given by that uh, value that we found by solving the expression here. So we should say this is equal to um, i naught or v naught over square root of um, omega squared L squared plus R squared. That's the amplitude. That's the reduced amplitude you saw. Um, and we have still have this. Cosine of omega T plus phi. And I guess I'll just leave it here. So this phi is, instead of being an undetermined value, it's actually determined. This is the expression that determines the numerical value of phi. And you know, I could plug in, you know, phi is the arctangent of minus omega l over r, but you know what, it's getting complicated. So I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> so that's the answer. And so I'm going through this to show you that this is all doable uh, without introducing any of the new mathematical tools that we have introduced. You can actually do this all. It's not, it's not impossible to do. It's tedious. It uh, does involve an insight that you may not have known before, but it is doable. But you know, this, all this tediousness, that's uh, really the reason most, uh, well, many uh, instructors for this class don't cover driven AC circuit. Uh, because they realize that to make students to go through this math, that's not something that you can ever put on an exam. Because this is way too, difficult, way too time consuming for an exam. Doable for homework, but way too time consuming for exam. 